I am so happy and grateful to have you on the show today, Kobe. Welcome on the PEC podcast and thank you for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me, Laura. So um, my husband, he bought your books, I think, three years ago. And we have a little bookstore uh, in, in Berlin at home. And um, he brought home the book. I think it was What to Do with an Idea. And um, I remember him bringing the book home and we were sitting on the couch with, the, with our little son and we were going through the book and I was like, wow, this book is so good. It's so, it's so um, helpful and inspiring. And um, because I, I'm a big fan of living ideas and when you get touched like by an idea or by inspir inspiration, you should go for it. And that if you don't take the idea, we'll probably move on and find someone else that, that, that brings the idea to the world because ideas want to live. So um, thank you for all the books you, you wrote so far, because I think they're really all of them amazing. Um, but let's go back a little bit of time. How how did you start writing books? Have you ever known that, that you want to be an author? You know, my goal wasn't so much to be an author as I I had similar experience like what you were mm. you, you you just uh, you just spoke about, which is ideas are powerful. Inspiration is a really amazing thing. And I think when you're touched, moved, or inspired, you really are engaged in your own life. And mm -hmm. so uh, it's been a goal of mine and, uh, and something that I've enjoyed that I've gotten to work in the area of inspiration. And that sort of, I don't know if it's naturally took me to that, but uh, a step of that was, uh, was authoring uh, books as well. And I really love the, the format of a picture book because you need to distill and simplify a message in such a way that it can be taken and uh, shared. But also, I think a picture book is very expansive, you know, that it could really lead towards wonderful discussions and wonderful conversations. And really, I think that's where the power of a book lies. It's with the reader. You know, it's in their head and their heart and how they connect with other people and how they share that story, how they live that story. That's the part where I think the, where the magic happens. I don't think it really happens with the ink on the paper and uh, really even in our editorial department or in a, in a printed piece of uh, uh, product. It's, it's, it's really more in those, in those thoughts and in those mm -hmm. feelings and those emotions that it can potentially spark and uh, that are really already there with the reader. It's just really encouraging them. And do you remember when, because I think what to do with an idea was the first book of the, like of the series, right? From, from the book books. Yes. Um, so do you remember when, when the idea of this book touched you and, and how was like, how did, did it happen in your brain? And like, because I think first we always go like pregnant with an idea and it's there and we like, we get into, how was that for you to, when you first had that idea of the book, what to do with an idea. Yeah. So that, that's a, that's kind of a fun story that I would, I get to work in a really creative company. We have mm -hmm. wonderful designers and uh, writers and creative folks and just, you know, wonderful human beings. And I noticed that when we were talking about new concepts um, that we could be kinder and we could be gentler with these new ideas. And um, you can see someone just, kind of shrink a little bit from somebody's exhale or somebody's eye roll or a negative comment. And I thought, this is really not great. You know, that, mm -hmm. that uh, we don't know how good these ideas are yet. You know, they're, they're just in their very initial, you know, form. And it, and it sat with me all through the night. I tend to write a lot really early in the morning and I got up and uh Uh, ironically enough, the first thing that was close to me was my, my iPhone. And I wrote the book on my iPhone that morning. Wow. And, uh, and there's little bits that I adjusted and things, but most of it was there. And so it, I, and I don't want that to be a, a misnomer either, because I think that sometimes ideas flash to you, right. And the inspiration mm -hmm. floods in and it seems like such an easy, fast thing, but I, I, because the book has gone on to do so many wonderful things it's made me be more reflective over that process. And I realized that I used things in the book and introduced things in the book that 
I probably learned over five years prior to that. You know, so I think that that's really an interesting thing about creativity is we are constantly gathering, we're constantly funneling and filtering uh, inspiration and stimuli and information. And sometimes it catalyzes to something beautiful and you can't really force that, but at the same time, you can be open to it and encourage Mm -hmm. it and be building those skills almost almost like you would with a sport. You have to kind of practice if one day you're going to perform well, you know, on the field or on the court. Was there one particular thing that you learned like five years ago that kind of led to that book? Yeah, I think one of the things that uh, learning over the, the that time was that you know, we all have doubts and fears. Mm. I had doubts and fears when I wrote the, what do you do with an idea? I it took me a long time to even share it with anybody else in the company. I very, I did it very meekly. I kind of just snuck it in. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm the, I'm the CEO of the company. So it was kind of a weird thing for me to write this book and, and it makes the dynamic a little bit weird for a, an editor or something to say, Oh, I don't think it's any good. Uh, but at the same time, I didn't want to force that. So it took about two or three weeks. Everybody's busy. And I, and I had the courage to sort of check back in with one of the people. What'd you think of that book? And she was like, oh, yeah, I liked it. You know, it's, it's, it's good. Um, and that sort of gave my, my, you know, dwindling confidence of some, trying something mm-hmm. new, um, a little bit more confidence. Mm-hmm. And um, so we ended up moving forward with it, doing that. and. The, the kind of the neat thing about that is that what plays out in the book played out for me as well. Mm. And so, you know, you have to take that step. It's, and you feel it's a very vulnerable, very scary thing to share your ideas or your inspiration with someone else. And it feels horrible when somebody turns it away or says it's not great. And so what I really wanted from this book was to help kids to see that it's just an opinion, right? Like that, uh, If you get negative feedback or you get someone saying that this isn't great, it's, it's just a, it's just an opinion. And those people that are giving you opinions, they have their own hopes, fears, and insecurities themselves. So that, not, that might not even be an accurate picture. So what my, what my dream was is that someone would read this book and later on when they encounter an experience like that, they have something else to draw on. It doesn't just say I'm no good or that, that the truth says that you know, there's no worth here that maybe there still is, maybe they can still believe in it. And I also wanted people to be able to to change positions in that that scenario and look at how kind are you to other people's ideas, Mm. especially the new ones, right? That are maybe unproven, maybe don't don't look, maybe they look a little wild and crazy at the time. But I would just argue that if we look back through history, some of our most amazing inventions uh, were thought to be really, weird and stupid and crazy at the time and, you know, totally outlandish. Um, I know that uh, I remember my first experience looking at the internet and wondering, what is this? And here we are talking, you know, uh, uh, over a Zoom call. And so I, I kind of think that we don't have a very good perspective of new ideas. And mm-hmm. so my hope was to put a book out there that would maybe start young, but I think I didn't really write it just for kids. I wrote it for people of all ages. And, um, but I think that sometimes we get some of that input early where we don't think we're creative or we don't think we're, we're smart or we don't think that we have ideas to, to share and to give to the world. And I think that's important that we get that kind of encouragement and that modeling at a younger age. Yes, I, I absolutely agree. And I think one of the reasons why this book is so successful is that it is for all ages. Like no matter who reads it, we all can kind of, we've, everyone finds itself in, in the book because ideas come to no matter the age you are. You can have a brilliant idea with 85 as well as with four. I mean, ideas just come to, to whomever is open for it. Um, I would like to touch a little bit deeper on, on, on doubts and on the feeling of, oh, I'm not sure if my idea is good enough. And what you just said, you're in this um, realm of vulnerability and you want to share, but kind of you also are afraid to share because you're afraid that someone just like stamps on your idea and 
it just hurts and then you feel this disencouraged so um maybe you have a few tips or or advices on on someone who's maybe listening right now and this person has this idea in their head for maybe now weeks or months and it's like oh, i i want to get it out but i i'm afraid so how how can that person maybe pursue that idea and and have the faith and the confidence to to bring it out to the world i i think a good thing to know is that there is there isn't a day that comes that you don't have fear mm -hmm. right there, there isn't a day in your life that comes where you don't have any more doubts, mm -hmm. you don't have any more insecurities. I think that we we all have those. And um, but you have to do it scared. Mm -hmm. You have to do it, you know, a little afraid. And I think that what's important about that is how much you grow in those in those instances. Now you have new information, right? You 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 press through a fear and you do it anyway, and you have a new set of um, skills and a new and a new a new tool in your tool bag. I think that we naturally, as people, um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about imposter syndrome. There's been a lot of talk about um, uh, feeling that we're not worthy. You know, uh, and I'm glad that there's more discussion about that. There's mm -hmm. more discussion about that uh, than there was, say, 10 or 20 years ago. And I think it's it's great because people can feel that. This isn't their experience alone. You know, I think we walk into a room and, you know, a lot of times we scan it for our insecurities and, you know, and we, we look for evidence of, you know, why we're not measuring up or we look for evidence why we're not, we're not as capable. It's interesting because we don't do that as much to other people. Mm -hmm. We give them much more of a benefit of the doubt than we do mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's something to know, especially if you're going to be doing something creative. You know, because when you say that someone rejects your idea, it doesn't feel like they reject your idea. It feels like they reject you, you mm -hmm. know, and it feels very personal. And it feels like I failed, not my idea wasn't, you know, good mm -hmm. enough. It feels like I'm not good enough. And so I think that that internalization is a hard thing to then, you know, muster up the courage to do it again. And so, um, but life is that trial and error, right? I mean, uh, uh, You, you wouldn't have people walking around if they didn't try again after they fell mm -hmm. down the first time, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that that is innately part of life. Um, and I think the more we can provide stories and uh, places for people to um, focus and where they can, you know, I believe that in like, one of the things I love about picture books, it's almost like they put, you can put a little handle on a story and people can take it with them. It's so mm -hmm. brief. It's not, it's not a, it's not a huge time commitment, but the thought can be a big thought that they can carry with them. And yes. that's, that's the, that's the hope anyway, is that you're giving people different tools to kind of uh, mm. allow them to take with them along their way on their journey. Yeah, it's true. Do you have kids yourself? I do. Yes. I have a, a now 17 year old daughter and a 15 year old son. Yeah. Wow. So, so much fun. Um, just, uh, I, I really got lucky in the kid department. They're really wonderful people. Wow. How do you, um, how do you educate your, your kids or how, how do you pass on this, this knowledge and this, um, this confidence to your kids that they should go and pursue your, their dreams and their ideas and to be inspired and like is there something how, how you help your kids to to be in that that space or in this inspiration well i think it's a it's a balance you know um they need the they need the room to try and fail and do things on their own and, and, and do a lot of self-discovery. Uh, my kids joke sometimes when I'm talking about, especially life skills that uh, they get a speech. Um, and of course they're teenagers. So, you know, dad doesn't know very much. Um, and, uh, but at the same time, they're also inquisitive about it. You know, they're, they, as I said, they're really, they're really neat young people. Um, But I, I, I think we can, we learn best by modeling, mm. you know, I think, so I think not unlike the, the picture books that I write, we're trying to create a, a model and a dialogue and a scenario that 
someone can embody themselves. And so it's my hope, like with the book, like, what do you do with an idea that it becomes the reader's story. Mm-hmm. And, and that's really been the biggest reflection is people say, that's my story. That's my business. That's, that's, that's what I've done, you know? And that's where I think it's, it's most powerful. If we can, if we can model behavior that can help us grow, whether that's personally or through the arts or through books, um, people can, it's, it's a little bit in, in my mind that it's a, like it's a, it's a banquet, you know, mm-hmm. and people can select what, what works for them, what, what's tasty. Maybe they pick something up and they say, I don't like that so much and they put it back down, but maybe they really like something else. And, and I think that having that room to select and to do makes it feel a little more empowering and it feels like it's my journey that I'm on and I'm learning uh, along the way. Uh, I don't think anybody really loves being lectured at mm-hmm. and told you know, what, what, what it is and what they should think and feel and do. But I innately believe that people are, are good and want to grow and want to um, discover more about themselves. So, and uh, honestly, I think even like a book, like uh, what do you do with an idea? It means something different to someone that's maybe 70 than is seven. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it might mean something for that seven-year-old when they're 17 and 27 and 37 and, you know, uh, 87. So Mm -hmm. uh, I think that the filter and how you see things changes. Um, And so for me with my kids, you sort of try to lay out a nice banquet. And see what they see what they're hungry for. Mm-hmm. Thank you for sharing. I, I I agree. I think the best way to 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 help them growing up is to model as best as you can and to to become yourself the best human being you can be. And then they have the chance to watch and to learn. And yeah. Um, yes, and, and I will say you know, mm-hmm. and you don't always live up to that. You know, uh, mm-hmm. and sometimes they learn by our own mistakes, right? Yes. And uh, yes. parents are human too, and they're not yes. perfect. And yes. so, and that's not necessarily horrible. It's, it, it leads to great discussions sometimes when mom and dad fall short mm-hmm. and uh, could have done better. Yes. And this is something I, I really like to teach my son is also to forgive and to say, I'm sorry. Um, I think this is also something when, when I fail and I do something where I think five minutes later, that was really stupid. Why did I react in that way? I know better. And then I go to him and I say, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. That was not good what I just said or how I said it. And I'm sorry, please forgive me. And I think this is also important that they learn how to, to, to say I'm sorry and to, to apologize for something that, that you did wrong. And also to forgive on, on the other hand, you know, to, to not blame the other person, but to let it go. So yes, I, I absolutely agree that it's also important to, to show your own flaws so, so that they know it's okay. You don't have to be perfect to be loved. Yes. You know, I, and I think it's been really nice getting to see people grow up. You know, our kids mm-hmm. are little for a while, but only really a short while. Like I said, I have teenagers now. And I think my daughter reminded me just yesterday where I was uh, the one that was more like, you know, we need to do such and such. And she was the one that said that we need to slow down. And we need to maybe start this over again. And this is not the best way for this conversation. And also not having so much ego involved, right? To the parent-child situation and knowing that a lot of times our, our own children are our teachers. Yes, and they, so true. They, can, they can model wonderful behavior for us too. And not to discount that at all because they're, they, they're seeing a world that's different than the world that we grew up in. So and they're true. seeing uh, something completely different than, than we see. And it's no less relevant. It's just different. Mm. And so, yes, we might have been on the planet a little bit longer as parents than our kids. But that doesn't mean we see everything and we don't get everything right. And so mm. I think that, you know, the, the aspect of listening to your children a lot of times also shows them that they have a voice and that they have power and that they have. And, and what do you want for them when they grow up? You want them to be able to be self-advocates and have a voice and have power. And we have to be able to model the fact that the voice isn't always the parent's voice, you know, and it certainly isn't always the wise voice. Sometimes Mm. it's the kids. So true. Yeah. Thank you for for saying that. So true. I just, yesterday I was with my son uh, in the ocean and he's learning to swim right now. 
and he is a swim teacher so i haven't been i don't know where he is right now with his swim skills so i was like okay you need to teach me how i can help you the best so tell me how how you want to be held tell me when i should help you when i should not so i and he was like okay okay we do it like this and then you do this and it was so cool because he kind of he wasn't the student anymore he was the teacher teaching me how to help him learn which was uh, really nice and he felt so confident so yeah there was a nice so i absolutely agree we we really need to give them the space to to because they have the knowledge right they know we we yeah so true um yeah i think i think some of the things that we, we were talking about here too is is confidence yes and um a really well-meaning parent can really dampen confidence mm. because they step in so much mm. and they're so assertive that mm. the child doesn't know where, how capable they are. And mm. so I think that, um, you know, I, I had a conversation with our staff and we were talking about trust and we were saying that is, is it a leader's goal and, and uh, is it their job to like, say, make the numbers and sales for this quarter or is it to grow people? Mm. And, you know, really, I think it has to only be their job is to grow people. And if they're growing people, then all of the thousands and thousands of different decisions and actions and stuff that it takes to have good performance financially or whatever, however else you want to measure a company's success, I don't think any of it can be bigger than growing your people. And so if we're able to, to, to grow each other, then it's sort of the rest takes care of itself in a lot of ways. And, and it was fun because we were reflecting on that. And even one of the managers is like, it's really great to hear that from you, you know, and it's really and she said, I, I know that you've told me that many times, but I get so caught up. Like, mm -hmm. I, we have to make sure that this quarter is, is great that she said, it's really nice to hear how supportive that is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I think that, you know, if we, if we bring it back to kids again, it's really not about getting that A in math. It's really not about, you know, getting that, uh, that perfect score and such and such. It's just about growing and learning. And so we really won't look back, I think, and say, you know, hey, you could have had an A minus instead of a B plus in algebra. And that's really the goal. It's like, no, the arc goes out a lot farther than that. You mm -hmm. know, we're preparing our, our children for life. It's not for college. It's not for occupation. It's not, it's, you know, we're not thinking long enough. The horizon's way farther than that. It's, mm -hmm. can they be happy? Can they be fulfilled? Can they enjoy the life that they're, that they're about to, that they're sort of at the beginning of and they're, and, you know, hopefully they get a long life. That's really, I think the goal. So if you look at a book, like what do you do with an idea? It's not really about fourth grade or fifth grade or, you know, getting an A or doing well or getting in the right college or any of those things. It's about having the confidence to pursue things that you innately yeah have in you to share with the world i mean that's yes. why they're gifts right you share them yes absolutely absolutely so true thank you thank you for sharing so true so um in your other book what to do with a problem uh, or what you do with a problem um it's about how we can deal with a problem and i think many people are also here afraid of having a problem or or not really seeing maybe also the chance that lies within a problem. So maybe you can talk about a little bit about that. What, what maybe has been a problem in your life that, that helped you to, to become the person you are now? Or how should we, how should we um, see problems maybe from a, from a different perspective? Well, so I never thought I'd write another book, to be perfectly honest, after What Do You Do With an Idea? It wasn't until I had a birthday and someone gave me a card and it says, what do you do with a birthday? And, mm -hmm. uh, and it was such a, like a key unlocked uh, all of that for me. And I couldn't believe it that, of course, I could ask that question in a different way. And um, I know it seems so obvious, but it never occurred to me. And I started writing What Do You Do With a Problem? Um, mainly because we try to avoid them. 
And if we really look back, I'm sure if you look back over your life, Laura, the, those times of adversity, mm. they're meaningful to you, yes. right? And, and they're meaningful to who you are today. And so, again, it's, it's, it's modeling. Although I will tell you that when I finished the book, I had many people, buyers for uh, children's books and things. Oh, what do you do with an idea? It's such a great book. And it's so inspiring. Do you really want to write about problems? Are you really going to put problem in the title of a book? Who wants to buy problems? You know, nobody, what, nobody wants problems. And I had that whole aspect again, you know, you, you sort of doubt yourself. You wonder like, maybe this is a big mistake. But I knew that I wasn't writing a book to try to chase sales. And I wasn't writing a book to try to do a twin of what do you do with an idea. I, there's something to say there, right? And there's something to, that needs to be addressed. And so I press forward with that. And, you know, it, it, uh, it went on to be number one on New York Times uh, bestseller list. But more than that, I think we have to look at some of these things that we tend to stuff under the rug or avoid or want to push off. Um, and that's really what the problem book is about, is about that we need to rethink what a, what a problem is in our life. Rethink what adversity or a challenge. And, and would we really want to avoid them completely? I would say we miss out on so many beautiful aspects of ourselves if we do, that we, we really don't find out how brave and strong and capable we are without having some of that in our life. Now, we don't welcome it. We don't, it's not fun to have failure and problems and things like this in our life. You know, there's another book I wrote called Trying. And uh, that was that was similarly in that I really think that we have to reformat how we think about failure, that it's not something that we have to be so fearful of and trying to avoid that, that it's actually a twin. It's, 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 it's like the, it's like just intertwined with success. Mm -hmm. And so unless you get familiar with failure, you really can't get familiar with success because ultimately that's, they're going to be one and the same that you, if you're going to have something that you would succeed with, including pursuing an idea or anything else mm -hmm. like that, you have to know that there will be setbacks. Mm -hmm. There will be things that won't go as you, as you hoped. And it also might be a process that needs perseverance mm -hmm. and dedication and grit and being able to deal with difficulties, you know, and it could be prolonged. You can't, you know, a lot of times beautiful, wonderful things happen. And we even look at businesses and say, what an overnight success. That's amazing. But go interview those founders. Go really see what their story is. Nothing was overnight. Yes. They were, they were working when no one was watching. They were going through things when no one's clapping for them. And so that's really what a lot of things look like is that there is that challenge that's there. And you also go back and you may be a really successful person. They look back and they say, gosh, I kind of miss those days mm. when we didn't know if we were going to make it or not. And mm. we were just doing our best and, you know, flying by the seat of our pants and the unknown introduced so many wonderful feelings of adventure. And you were really alive, you know, during that time. And I think that that's true too. I don't know that you could handle that an entire life of just, you know, like being in that, in that heightened sense. But for periods of your life and for chapters of your life and pages of your book, it makes the story so much more interesting for you that, uh, that you have trials and you have setbacks and you have failures and problems come in because honestly, I think problems come bearing gifts in both hands. You know, they, they really do. And that's what really that book's about is look a little bit closer because, you know, like your, your son um, learning to swim. Uh, if everything, if he, if he never faced anything, when, when, when something came like a bigger wave or something else that came in and he was able to deal with that, he will carry that with them in so many different mm -hmm. ways. And would you wish that upon him? No, that's scary. That you like, you know, you don't want to just like create these, uh, these trials and tribulations, but life will do that anyway. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and having tools and resiliency to deal with that. I think is a, a major factor in happiness and a major factor in wanting to stretch and see what kind of person you want to become. That's so true. Thank you so much for sharing. 
is there is there um anything you're afraid of is there something also in in the business sense or in in your own professional career that you still be like oh don't want to go there or this this scares me is there still something like that yeah i i i still have a fear of public speaking mm. um you know i don't i don't necessarily i've i've always um enjoyed creating uh the products and uh, uh but i don't necessarily enjoy being on the stage uh mm. uh doing that it's not that it's horrible but i i definitely still have a little bit of trepidation and fear about it. Um, you know, I think that, I think we all have some aspects of things that are a little bit of a challenge. So I've done some things like improv classes and done some things like that, that uh, I sort of half enjoyed mm -hmm. and half dreaded, you know, going. And it's kind of a really interesting, complex thing because sometimes I really enjoy the class and doing it. But I still don't look forward to going to the next class the next <laughs> week because it's uh, it still uh, has a little bit of you know trepidation around that. Mm -hmm. But you know, the more that you do something, the the less it sort of hangs over you. I mm -hmm. think. But uh, uh, I certainly haven't solved that. But I I definitely know that there are wonderful opportunities. To connect with people that might allow that, that might need me to be more courageous or to step out of my comfort zone a little bit more that way um and i'd like to think i i will try to embrace those but uh you know sometimes i also fall back and i'm really busy and i've got other things going on and i let those opportunities go by because they do stretch me out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. Who is the person you are most grateful for in your life? Oh, I think that that would be my wife. You know, mm -hmm. she is a, a wonderful human being, very supportive um, and so deeply interested in life. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, the positivity of life, the, the expanse of it. So she's a great model for me, you know, too. Uh, There isn't a hike or an adventure, a trip that she isn't interested in uh, in pursuing or checking out. Um, and I think that those are those are good reminders. Um, our routines are beautiful. Mm -hmm. There are wonderful things that we get a lot of effectiveness and, and productivity out of, but they're also our cages too, you mm -hmm. know. And we want to open that door and go to new areas and try new things, mm -hmm. um, which doesn't always feel like that's the, the right thing or the natural thing to do. But, uh, you know, I think if we're going to continue to grow throughout a lifetime, it takes stepping into those unknown places a mm. little bit more and stepping into those spots that feel a little bit scary or feel um, just uncertain. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Um, I have one last question that I ask all of my podcast guests. So imagine you live a really, really long life. Okay, you get really, really old. Um, but one day there will be the last day of your life. And I would come to you and I would say, Kobe, I'm so sorry, but all your books are gone. Everything you ever did is deleted. So there's nothing left. Okay, nothing you ever created. And I would give you a white sheet of paper and a pen. And you could write on this white sheet of paper three wisdoms or ideas or concepts of life you would like the people that stay behind to remember and to live by. What, what would you write down? Wow, that's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a wonderful question and, and, uh, and a difficult one. Um, I think that the one would be that you know, time is limited. It's your most valuable thing you have. Um, treat it as such. You know that that. Th I don't know if we'll ever have something more valuable than a day or a, a lifetime. Um, uh, love the people you love. You know while you're while you're there. And a third is you know live harmlessly. You know we 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 should find place for all creatures. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, thank you for this beautiful, inspiring conversation. I think you helped so many people listening right now to 
to just have this this confidence in going for whatever wants to go through them and when, wants to be expressed through them because i think this is mainly why we're here right to express our gifts to the world and our soul and to, to explore ourselves by that so thank you so much for sharing and thank you so much for writing those amazing books and i hope many 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 more people will read them and um maybe yeah there will be more more what to do with whatever a heartbreak or uh, all these things that 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 yeah we all have in in our lives so thank you so much i wish you all the best for for everything that's coming and thank you for for this wonderful conversation thank you laura and it's a wonderful thing you're doing spreading all this positivity and uh and insight so it was my pleasure to, to join you thank you